Good morning, everyone. I uh, would like to officially call the Transportation and Commerce Committee to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Alderman Conway. Alderman Flowers. Present. Alderman Moore. Here. Alderman Vaccaro. Present. Alderman Cohn. Present. Alderman Howard. Present. Alderman Muhammad. Present. Alderman Davis. Alderman Conway, Alderman Davis, six present. You have a quorum. Okay, quorum being present. Uh, we will hear, and our, or our chairwoman is actually en route right now. She said that she'll be here in about five minutes, but it would be okay to go ahead and uh, hear uh, the board bills before taking a vote. So um, I will take up board bill 27 as our motion to hear board bill 27. So make a motion, so moved. Great. Well, mm -hmm. both of us moved, so. Second. Mm -hmm. All right, board bill number 27 is before us. Good morning, committee members. Good morning. Um, my name is Antonio Strong, Deputy Director of Finance and Administration. Uh, this is a lease agreement uh, between Enterprise Leasing Company and St. Louis. Uh, we are entering into a long-term lease agreement for the Springdale parking lot. The Springdale parking lot is an off-airport property, which is, you really can't see it on this map, kind of on this lower half area. It's not, it was a lot that was previously used for, inter, uh, for employee parking, and then we intermittently used it for, uh, for other facilities that would like to come in and park cars for like a dollar per car. Uh, this is about 17.86 acres. Uh, I do have a couple of exhibits if you want to kind of see what the lot looks like. Uh, this agreement is for 120,000 annual payment, but it does not show the total value of this contract. The total value of this contract, uh, we will also decrease our expenses. So right now, the lessee, the lessee will perform repairs and maintenance, which would include and not limited to lawn care, lighting, maintenance, and utilities. Uh, so with 120,000, uh, if you actually, uh, if you actually include the uh, utilities and repair and maintenance. It's probably an additional 15,000 if you look at it that way. This is a five-year term that would begin on July 1, 2017 and will end on June 30, 2022. At its sole option, the lessee may extend the agreement for one additional five-year term. Uh, Enterprise plans to use the lot to transition their cars from their rental fleet to sell at auction or their used car parking lots. Uh, we did obtain appraisals to, to ensure that we, main, we obtain fair market value of this land. This also uh, it, it, it integrates with our five-year strategic plan goals to generate revenue from underutilized assets. And at this time, we would like to respectfully uh, request your approval of this lease agreement. So, uh, and we'll take questions, but this is actually Enterprise Holdings, correct? The yes. you know, yes. privately owned company that's based in Clayton. So. Um, there's some newer members to the committee, so I just want to make sure that they're aware that whenever we enter into these lease agreements, particularly when it comes to the price that we're, you know, collecting off of, the, or the revenue that we're getting off of the lease, that, you know, it's federal law, that, you know, that's all done in accordance with, you know, market standards and all of that, so. Um, One additional thing to note on this lot, Antonio mentioned, this lot was built probably close to 20 years ago now actually was used for about two months as an employee parking lot. It, it's, it never worked as an employee parking lot, so it ended up being vacated after that. It sat empty for many, many years. There were a couple of small opportunities with large uh, car dealerships, as Antonio mentioned, that would periodically say, look, we'll do, we, we entered into these intermittent agreements for a, a dollar per car per day just to get some utilization. It generated very little money. So this lot has just been sitting there dormant. So the fact that you know Enterprise came to us probably well over a year ago when right. we started working on this, um, we were ecstatic because it's an opportunity not only to collect the revenue, but to stop spending the money that we're spending on mowing it, on keeping the lighting up, and they did some infrastructure cost to new lighting as well in the lot. So, so then that was actually one of my follow-up questions and the. Um, exhibit that you handed us there's it seems like there's a newer structure that's on the parking lot it looks new but that's that's a pretty old structure is it yeah okay yeah 
they did a little bit of work to yeah. it. They painted it. They did some things to it, but it's been there since the okay. beginning. Yeah. And how long would you say that this has been vacant now? About nine, ten years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, we'll take questions from the committee. Uh, Alderwoman Flowers. Yes. Thank you. You, you said that people parked there for a dollar. Well, they would park uh, per car. So each car would cost like would, not people. Yeah. It would be a companies. So oh, okay. we had a couple agreements where people that that had used car lots or that had massive dealerships, okay. they were the transporter. So we would enter into an agreement with that particular company okay. to park their cars as they were in transition. So it wasn't open to the public for parking. Okay, gotcha. It was it was to a corporation. And sometimes they would have five or six hundred cars a day, so we would collect that money. But you know, then you would go for months without anybody, par without them parking any cars there. So it was, it was just trying to do anything to, you know, generate some <coughs> revenue off of so it. So this is basically storage. This won't be where people will go that are renting cars to go. No. 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 Okay. And is this part of the the buyout of those homes from years ago? No. The Springdale lot really is is not part of where the Kinlock area is or the Bridgeton area is. Mm -hmm. It is if you're if you're heading to where um, like the Hanley Metrolink station is, there's a subdivision that's kind of down the way there, and this parking lot sort of sits in the front of that. There's also a, a horse farm that a lot of people know that's down in that area. I don't believe that, that there was ever homes there as part of this parking lot. It was just vacant land that the airport bought many years ago, but it wasn't a buyout of homes. And how many acres would you say this was? Seventeen. Seventeen. Do you have any other land like that that's vacant that you're looking for tenants? Oh my God, yes, yes. 2,000 acres. Okay. Yeah, so we I have ha several acres of land uh, that, and like I said, within our five-year strategic plan, it is embedded in the plan that we would find use for our underutilized land. 2,000 But there are acres. restrictions. Uh, yeah, I, I have a company called Car Park. With, that's been looking for a lot of land. They even wanted to buy the landfill in my ward, which I don't think that's it. But they're looking for, for just places to put a lot of cars that insurance companies, I guess when you wreck them, they oh. go and they sell. I mean, it's, it's, sort of, it's kind of a salvage, salvage thing, but supposedly people don't come there to salvage. A lot of the cars are sold overseas online. So it's, uh, trust me, I drilled them, I grilled them. but. I don't know if it's an area that's tucked away, which you won't see, which apparently they claim they're rated high in what they do and have other properties in other cities that are close to things like schools and airports. And I just, it just rang a bell when airport and they said they were by one and it looked friendly, but they're looking for a place, a space, a large lot plot of land, but Car, car park, did, they did contact us. They did, okay. Um, and we talked to them back and forth, okay. but at one point they just cut off communication. Okay. So. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I had no more questions. Uh, Alderman Moore. How much land like that you say we have? Well, if you look at, you know, the airport owns, city owns about 4,400 acres of land total about 2,200 sits inside the airport perimeter fence, mm -hmm. and then you have another 2,000 plus acres that are outside. It's not contiguous. A lot of it is in various sections. A lot of it Do we want to lease it all or we want to sell some of it off to gain? No, uh, there's no interest in selling the land. Uh, there's, if the land is sold, most of that money goes back into the federal government versus being able to keep it. So <coughs> if we do long-term land leases, the airport can keep that revenue at the airport to be able to do things within the airport. So the preference is to try and break up the pockets of land and look for opportunities to do leases where you have someone come in and either build infrastructure on them and we get the lease revenue. And if it's a non-aeronautical use, then that has to go through FAA for approval. And of course, every piece of land has to have an appraisal with fair market value. Well, you know I'm an advocate of getting our plaques back for parking. So <laughs> find a spot where the aldermen can park their cars and get our plaques back. I'm an advocate for that. So if we got that extra land, we could find a place for us to park out there at the airport. Well, there's, there, would, there would be no shuttle to those places. So we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get an <laughs> automatic shuttle. Just get a ride. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll be in the car. 
How long have you been working on this? How, well, long? How long have you been working on putting this together? Well, we've been working with Enterprise for almost about a year now. And, and putting the board bill together, how long? About a year? Uh, now, the board bill itself, probably about three months. Okay, Maybe so three, three months you've been working on this, and it was completed how long ago? We just took it to Airport Commission on April. Yeah. Okay, so, it been, so, so in April or May, so before that it was completed, right? Well, not completed. Nothing's completed until we bring it to Airport Commission and through the legislative process. Okay, how long ago was that? I see that, you know, it's a bill sponsored by Alderwoman Davis. My, my complaint is the same complaint I had every year, and we keep bringing this back up. Has anybody here had a chance to read this since we got it Friday? I haven't, and I'm uncomfortable voting on these things whenever we get these with actually no time to read them. And I had that problem when I was on the airport commission. To me, this stuff is put in front of us intentionally at the last minute so that everything in the bill, we have to take your word for we haven't had a chance to really read through, and I like, I've always been someone that likes to read through everything so that if I have questions, I have no questions because I, I haven't had a chance to read this bill yet. Today, I'm gonna be inspected to vote this thing in or out or up or down or whatever. And you know, Enterprise is a, is a, is a good company. I mean, I have no issue there, but I'm just telling you, I'm going to not be voting on stuff when I get something one or two days prior to us having to vote on stuff. I mean, these, this, how thick these things are, I can't tell you anything. If, if, maybe I'm wrong. Can anyone, uh, Madam Chairman, anybody on this board, can anybody tell me what's in any of these bills? Well, the first thing I'm going to add to your uh, comment is this has been uh, available for you to read for since Friday. Nine, no, no. When the board bill numbers are issued and the calendar is prepared, so when the calendar is prepared, which was the previous Tuesday, these were listed already. So you, are, you had that much time a whole week to read it. So you this was not just available on this past Friday. They should be being sent to us. The package should be being sent to us. We shouldn't have to search stuff out. And I'm just giving you, in, in, in the last years, they have been sending them to us because every year we start out this way and every year I have to insist that we get these and they should be being sent to us. Even on the airport commission, they would send them to us. And even there, I asked for the respect to get it more than three or four days before a meeting. The airport commission is also open to the public, so you're welcome to attend any of those meetings as well. Yeah, well. I'm just saying it's open to the public, so they're the first Wednesday of every month at 2 o'clock. I'm saying that we should be getting these prior, at least a couple of weeks prior. They're, they're together. There's no reason that they can't come to us at the same time they're sent out to the commission. Because you know they're going to go in front of the commission and they're going to come here. They could be sent to us at the same time that it's going out to the airport commission, which would give us a month to read them. Nobody uh, does their business that way. I would prefer not to have anyone from this committee be influenced either by the commissioners or us no. influencing the commissioners. And so what so I'm no, saying, we don't need to have it before the commissioners. No, I'm saying that's the, the first body who has legal so, authority over the airport to make a decision on operations. So no, we will not get these before. I didn't the say before. At the same time, these things not are even put the same together. Time. Not are, even the same time. These not are until put they together. Vote on it. Well, then the day that they vote on it, then they can come out. And here. they do come here immediately. They you send it right over for a board bill. You well, you do it right away. And that's what happened last time. Well, I have not been getting them. And I'm not going to hunt them out online. So they out of are respect available for, out online. Of respect for, we are not going to be producing much more paper. We um, already don't have. Then I won't be voting on a lot the of this stuff. Alderman. We will not pre be producing any more paper. I will make sure that not only is it sent to you when the board bill number is issued, but also when it's put on the calendar. You will receive it by email. We will not produce any more paper. So you're, you're going to send the whole committee. board bill by email once it's together? 
when the board bill number is issued, right. I can then send it. Okay, well, I'll you. be looking for it so I have a chance to read through it. You got so it. I have intelligent okay. questions to ask, okay. not questions based off of what I'm being told here today. Keeping in mind that there's been plenty of board bills that I've voted on off of what I'm being told, like the concert, it has nothing to do with the airport, but the concert that's going to bring in the millions of dollars and all the stuff, and then even if they don't show up, they're going to pay us all this money each year, and yet we never really got a chance to read it. And of course, when they didn't come, there was, there was an out in there for them just to say, oh, well, you know. Well, they had a very good reason not to come. I wouldn't have come either, based on the, con the atmosphere in the city of St. Louis. Well, I, I wouldn't have come either. But they made a good, sound decision on their investment. I understand, but in the board bill, when they stood up there and talked to us, they had a locked in 10 year commitment, no matter what. And I believed it. And they will, they will abide by that. No, There's they a, didn't. They paid look, one time. We got too far to go. And that is not pertinent to this committee. Right. And well, there is a stipulation anyway, that there's I'm, a penalty in that contract. So I don't want to discuss that contract right. now. Anyway, yes, if I can get these, I'll be a lot more happier when it becomes a board bill. You can email me the whole board bill. That's fine. That is noted. We shall do that. Is that okay? All right. I appreciate that. Anything else, Alderman Vicaro? No, that was it. All right. Thank you very much. Alderman Cohn? No questions. Alderwoman Howard? I do have one question. Um, in Section 401, rental payment, and I'm not sure if this is, I, I, I understood you to say that they would pay an annual rental rate of 120000 but then it says it's payable in 12 equal, equal monthly installments. Yeah, they will actually pay monthly, so it will be 10000 per month. Oh, okay, because I was thinking that you, I thought I understood you to say that they yeah, would it, pay the 120 as, up front. Yeah, it's just listed as the annual amount uh, okay. up front. Okay, okay, okay. I was just, I, I, what I thought you said is that it would be, the 120000 would be, they would only pay annually one time and then I read that, you know, yeah, so. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. that's the only question I have. That was the only thing that I wasn't sure of. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Alderman Muhammad? No questions. Okay. Um, I didn't have any questions on this bill. There's, um, this is a routine. Uh, it's not like we haven't done business together before. And we will continue, hopefully, to do business. Uh, they're a good partner to the city of St. Louis. Uh, so I'd like to take a, mo a motion to approve board bill number 27. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second to approve board bill number 27. Uh, please call the roll. Alderman Conway. Alderman Flowers. Aye. Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Lucaro. Yes. Alderman Cone. Aye. Alderman Howard. Aye. Alderman uh, Mohammed. Aye. Chairwoman Davis. Aye. Alderman Conway. Six yes votes, one pass. Board bill number 27 has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to go to the next board bill. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Robert Salarano. I'm the Airport Properties Division Manager. We're respectfully requesting your approval for a common use airport club concession at the airport. Uh, this will be a club concession operated by Airport Terminal Services, which will do business as Wingtips Club. Airport Terminal Services is a local company based in Westport, and they do business at airports throughout North America. Uh, the premises that you see a rendering of is 2,500 square feet near gate E31 in Terminal 2. Uh, the space will be a pay per entrance fee. It's a quiet space. It's a good space for business travelers to sit and be able to do work quietly or even they'll have meeting space and things like that. Uh, the term of the agreement is 10 years beginning at the end of the build out period. Uh, the space is vacant now and the concessionaire has nine months to, uh, to build out the space. 
Uh, the revenue to the airport is the over the space of the 10 years, they pay us a minimum annual guarantee. The total minimum annual guarantee for the 10 years is $3,454,465. Uh, and that's versus percentage fees ranging from 5 to 8% over the life of the contract. <coughs> The airport concession disadvantaged business enterprise program goal for this concession was 0%. Uh, the 0% goal is reflective of uh, the fact that we're over significantly over our overall ACDBE goal. The fact that this is a, a one-off, we don't have other, any other clubs to compare it to and to set a goal against. And third is uh, the fact that the FAA encourages the establishment of race neutral goals from time to time on these sorts of concessions. Uh, that said, Airport Terminal Services did step forward with Regency Services, LLC, another local company, and their ACDB participation will actually be 3.67%. This concession was competitively bid, and ATS was the highest and best bidder, and it's the, the concessionaire recommended for approval. We respectfully request your approval of this concession for a common use club. One, one additional comment on this, you know, we do our um, quality survey reports to find out what our customers are saying. And one of the things that we have been ranking low in is club availability. The only club we currently have, we currently have in the airport is in Terminal 1, the American Airlines Admirals Club. And this has been one of those goals that we have been working on trying to react to the customer satisfaction surveys that they would like more use. Uh, the other thing that uh, this is obviously in Terminal 2 where Southwest is, Southwest is not an air, airline that has their own clubs like most of the legacy carriers, but they are very supportive and work very closely with other outside contractors to open these common use clubs in areas where they have the entire terminal. So clubs like this do exist in several other Southwest locations where they're the predominant carrier on those concourses. Uh, so it's something that they're very excited about as well because they do think and it's amenity that their customers have been lacking in Terminal 2. Okay. Um, let's just go right into questions, please. Uh, Alderwoman Flowers. Yes, thank you. So if I'm part of the Southwest Club, then I would be able to go in there and fine dining? Well, Southwest doesn't have their own club. Okay. So this is kind of a multi-user club. So they, they do have partnerships. They have clubs in other airports mm -hmm. in the country. So you can either buy a membership for their clubs across the country. Okay. You can buy a membership for the St. Louis club only. You can buy day passes for that club. There's a couple of other clubs like the American Express clubs, which some of you may have heard of that exist. They have a partnership with American Express. So if someone currently has the American Express club, <coughs> then this is one of the, you'll be able to use that as a uh, transferable membership with this one. So the operator is continuing to work with other entities and those will become known as they get ready to open and market uh, for the memberships. Okay. But it's not, uh, there are no Southwest clubs no, per airline se. clubs. Right. It, it would be if I had an American Express card or something, and that's how I would be know about it if I want to buy a membership. Right. Okay, thank you. More questions. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Alderman Moore. How, what is the fee for an individual like me to use that club? Um, they will set that, sir, and, and the, my guess, my approximation is $50. $50. Uh, for entrance, and then you also have, though, you know, the, there's discount programs with the corporations and things like that that they'll do. But that's not an annual fee. So no, that, that's that's a one-time. That's, that's a one-time fee. They're a little bit Sorry, of, and daily. As across the country, typically a one-time day pass in most of these clubs is anywhere from forty to fifty dollars. But you can use it the entire day, and if you're at an airport that has that club, you can use it at the other airport. Annualized memberships tend to be somewhere around three to five hundred dollars where you buy an annual membership and then you can use it you know anytime you're at the airport or come out to the airport so that as rob said that will be set by them but you know to be competitive across the country they've done their baseline analysis to make sure and as i said they already operate these clubs at jfk they operate another one at uh, uh san francisco Simpson, and yeah. another one at got it i'm trying to remember so they're uh so, you know, we don't have the exact Detroit, answer. Detroit Metropolitan. Uh, but that's typically what any club membership costs. Alcohol. Yes. Where is that located? 
It's across from gate E31, sir. If you go into terminal two and you go through security and you make a left and you walk all the way down and turn the corner, it's going to be right on your left after you turn the corner. Remember this in June, we're opening that next gate of complexes uh, for Southwest as they expand again this summer. So this, this club will be where, where the new gates were opened last year, those two gates at 31 and 33. And then we're coming around the bend for four more gates that would have been kind of the old D concourse corridor that. And how long are we leasing that space for? This will be a 10 year agreement, sir, beginning after they, on the day they open their doors. Bid it upon. Uh, yes, sir, it was, it was bid upon, uh, it was competitively bid. How much money is the bid? Uh, sir, over 10 years, it's the minimum annual guarantee is $3,454,465. And as they pass, if they pass that annual mark uh, between 300 and 365,000, uh, they pay us the minimum, uh, the percentage fee for the amounts over the mag. Okay. And we're still talking about privatizing. Uh, well, this we, has. Are we making it good for the privatizer? Well, if, you know, it depends what someone wants to come and look at, but any amenities within the terminal itself are of value to into, into any entity, whether that's a privatized entity, whether that's the airport, whether it's the airlines. Anytime you have additional sources within the terminal that are offering amenities and that's a, a revenue flow, that's good for anybody. It doesn't matter who the owner or operator is. That's all I have. Alderman Vaccaro. I do have questions. Uh, one of which, if you remember last year, it's going to be the same argument that the group that's selling the wine, even though there was a group that bid lower and had minority participation, we did not go with that. We went with the higher bid and no minority participation using the same statement you gave today where you said, well, we got plenty of minority participation throughout the airport. And again, here we are bidding. And the only reason this stuff plays on my mind is when Terry Kennedy was the chairman of transportation, these things would have certainly came up that were any of the bids lower or higher? Did they have, were all the bids without minority participation? without hiring a, uh, another company or taking part of something that's already in the airport, saying, well, we'll just use that as part of our minority participation, because we have zero on this one. No, sir, the, 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 the zero was the goal. The, oh, the, so our, our goal was to have no minority participation? It was it? a race-neutral goal, sir, and it's a 0% ACDB goal, and that was the goal-setting methodology that the, the Business diversity staff went over and came up with a 0% goal. ATS has, has come in and said they're going to have a 3.67%. And they're what? They're the janitor and, company, And they're they? uh, ACDBE participation. But then what do they do? It's janitorial um, services. Right, and they're already at the airport. Regency, yes. Yeah, so I mean, so they're not really creating anything different. And we're, we're saying, well, we're going to use something that's in place so that they can gain their minority participation. It's a company that's already at the airport that's going to do that. It has nothing to do with this. This is additional services that they will be providing with additional manpower that's needed for this. I think to understand, this is an ACDBE. So this is a concession which falls under the federal program for concessions. As an airport, and we have been audited numerous times recently on this, our goal is significantly higher at the airport and we have had significantly higher participation than most airports in the country. So when you look at large concessions like your HMS host, or when you look at concessions like your Hudson, which is the news and gift, those have stores, they have lots of restaurants, they have participate, participation goals. Right. When you have something unique that's a one-off like this, or like the Vino Volo, which was a wine bar high-end concept, the opportunity for a small vendor like that to come in doesn't have near the, the potential to create those partnerships. So you use that opportunity when you have an overage in other areas to be able to offer that and say for this particular case, which the FAA supports and looks at and says the same thing, 
you want to be able to make sure that just not the large companies are always getting these bids, that you open it up to some of these smaller companies as well. So the, and, and there were two other bidders. One had participation, one did not. And I think- And they were the high, and also to be clear that uh, ATS was the highest bidder. And that's what we go on, is the high bidder for a concession. Well, that, I mean, but we didn't on Vino Volo. On we Vino Volo, you're did. right. They, 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 I'm sorry, they were high. They were, so there was, I'm sorry, so I'm correct. You were correct. So host, in that case, bid lower and had the minority participation. We went with the higher bid with no minority participation on Vino Volo. No, sir. Uh, uh, going back to the Vino Volo bid, the Vino Volo bid, there, there were two bidders, Vino Volo and host. Host bid uh, slightly more money than uh, Vino Volo. And host also had uh, Vino Volo then bid a little bit less money. On the participation side, if you recall it, sir, there, were, there was very little participation on the uh, Vino Volo. But to be clear, sir, the, on the host contract, they did it as a joint venture, and they didn't submit the joint venture paperwork for the Business Diversity Office to review, so they couldn't say what their participation was going to be. So on this one, were there companies bid that had minority participation? Yes, sir. Um, this company bid the three the three point six seven uh, percent. The next highest bidder uh, was Airport Lounge Development, and they came in at approximately thirty percent participation. Um, and then uh, Mag US had zero percent participation. Okay, so the one with thirty percent minority participation, do they have a record at any other airport? They, they have other airports where they, do the, where they do club concessions and things like that. And the record is? They have a couple in the U.S., most yeah. of them are European, and they bid significantly less dollar revenue to the airport, significantly less. And also, I can't say what their participation, 30% uh, is what they uh, put down on their paper. Mm -hmm. uh, the Business Diversity Office, uh, I, I'm not sure what they would have come up uh, when they actually went down and told the, talked to the people. Well, it's, it's just on my mind, and, and it's something that, like I said, Terry Kennedy, when, I, when he was the chair of this, was one of the things that probably would have never even made it this far, which, you know, because you would have to try to work it around Terry, but we're sitting here and we're, we're, we're trying to find better paying jobs, and, you know, even our goals in the city on the NGA project and different stuff, we're asking for 38% particip you know, minority participation. And it's important that we start looking at all these things we do because we're day, trying sir. to, huh? We do every day, and as I said, our participation goals at the airport are significantly over what the requirements, both the local MNW as well as the ACDBE. And we're happy to make that presentation anytime if need be. It's been made to the airport commission recently to show as well. We were awarded the medium hub airport of the year across the country for minority participation in the program that we have. The wow. only airport in the country to receive the award in the medium hub category. And I just mm -hmm. want to add and just elaborate just on what the director and Rob has mentioned is that, um, that you have to carefully look at this because it's, this falls up under ACDBE goals. And our, the ACDBE goal is 25%. The airport as a whole is exceeding that by 14%. We're at 39% ACDBE goal participation right now. And so whenever we are exceeding that goal, that's when they say you need to find race neutral opportunity. So that's why we set at zero percent. I mean, but the, and we but can, the bidder came back and said, look, we're going to do 3.67%. And we could argue this, mm -hmm. you know, because I'd like to see where that minority participation is. Is it all just the janitors or are no, when you come to the bigger the federal the concession. concessions? It's not janitorial. When right. you talk about federal. ACDBE programs, that's concessions. So that's we could, restaurants, that is news and gift, and that's opportunities such as concessions like this lounge. Yeah. Yeah. Forget, the get, Carl, yes. I believe that we are at an impasse. It's not an impasse. I have oh, a question. I do believe we are, and as chairman, I'm saying that we are. So what I'd like to do is to take an opportunity, and this will be one of our 101s for the future. Obviously, we don't have a clear understanding of the difference between the federal guidelines and local minority participation goals. Mm -hmm. You never supersede federal government in anything and guidelines that they must meet according to the airport 
Okay. Right. Well, I'll let so what we're going to do is we're going to have a one-on-one, -on -one and we'll take 10 minutes, 15 minutes at our next meeting, and let's share with everyone, because we do have people who don't understand. I understand because it works the same way in construction. When you are bidding on a construction job that includes a federal facility, all the guidelines are different. We even have what we call an X factor when we're determining how the minority participation will be counted in these projects. So it's very different, and I'd like for us to have a better understanding. So I, uh, were there any other questions? No, I'll, I'll wait to see the, the actual real world participation comes from. I'll be looking forward to it. Okay, great, great. Uh, and make sure you make that information about your awards very loud and clear in your presentation. We will, thank you. Okay. I'll have Gooding present that. She's our Director of Diversity. I appreciate that, and she keeps us informed. I don't know if everyone here is on the email chain, but for those new members, we want to make sure that they are. I follow everything that goes on around the country, have been for about four years now, so I think that would be good. Uh, our next would be Alderman Cohen. So I'm just curious, uh, this space is in Terminal 2. Where in Terminal 2 is it? Is it inside the checkpoint or outside? Oh, it's in, inside the security area, so you'd have to go through the checkpoint to get it. Okay. Um, the lounges usually aren't on the outside. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's by the new gates that opened last May, the 3133 area. So if you come through the checkpoint and you make a left and you go to the far end and then you make that first bend around, mm -hmm. it's in that area right there. Is that a currently occupied space? It's, it's vacant. It's so walled off. You can't see it. It's, today it's walled off. The restaurant. There was a restaurant there many years ago. Okay. Obviously, uh, things changed and a lot of the space was walled off. So this is space that we took advantage of having and vacant and and there was an RFP that was put out yes. for leasing the space and you know all of the respondents who applied were in compliance with the RFP and you know were a competitive awarded. bid process with tours and uh, open question and answer periods and everything all right so this is currently a vacant space that's going to have now a productive use correct. associated yes, with it that's going to generate revenue that's correct sir wonderful thank you thank you uh, Alderwoman Howard the only question I have is that normally these are part of a uh, conglomerate or, or other clubs throughout the country. Is this going to be operating in isolation? Am I understanding you correctly? That this will be the only club like this? Or are they going to develop affiliations with other clubs at other airports? They do have other clubs today at other airports. Okay. There's a number of groups out there. You know, you have the, the standard airline clubs like mm -hmm. the American Admirals Club or right. the, U, the United's Club is called... I'm trying to remember what they're called. These, there's a number of operators in the past 15 years that have cropped Upped up, up with that are their operating own. Right. not just airline clubs, right. but operating these independent. So they currently have three other clubs that they're operating, and then they have partnerships with some of these other entities. Reciprocal agreement kind of things. Okay. Because that's why I was like, you know, if people are coming through. Okay. So this will net us $300,000 a year minimum. And then anything over that is is based on a percentage right. of their gross receipts. Okay. And they do all the build out. They're spending well over a million dollars in the build out. How many square feet is this? Twenty five hundred. Okay. And about how many patrons can they accommodate? Um, I'm not sure. That, uh, given this layout, uh, then they've got meeting rooms. Oh, about uh, one hundred and fifty. Yeah. I would say. Okay. I don't know that number exactly, but no. I would. Roughly say it's about 150 patrons at a time at a given time. Okay, okay, okay. Well, that's good to have something in terminal too. Thank you. That's all. All right, uh, Alderman Muhammad. Uh, you said right now, minority participation is set at 49 percent. 49. Uh, no, I don't know. Where the, the goal right now, sir, we, that we're accomplishing on the ACDBE side is 39% versus a goal of 25% set by the FAA. And in concert with the FAA. You, you lump them all together, sir. You, look, you take a look at all the concessions. And again, on the, um, on the concession side, which is a federal program, you take all airport concessions. So that includes restaurants, that includes your stores, that would include your lounges. It would include any concession that you have. And that total amount of concessions has that goal of 
If you lump ours all together, we're in the 39th percent. So it's, it's not a contract, it's not a professional services or a construction, it's a concession. Which is so is that documented anywhere? Oh, sure. Where is that documented at? Well, our, our office has all of that documentation, so which, I mean, it depends on how you want to see it. We're happy, and maybe that can be one the, of That'll be a part of the 101. They report every month. Yeah. Uh, the concessions report every month to the Business Diversity Office their participation. And it's all in a program. It's in a program called B2G. B2G. I think. So it's all documented in that program. We can print out any reports you want to. Okay. Last question. Why does the airport need a common use club? Why? Mm -hmm. Because it's been one of the complaints that we've had uh, on lack of amenities. You know, we do a lot of customer surveys to try to understand what people like and what they don't like. That's an outside program that, that uh, we have that talks to our customers and figures out. One of the things that we have been lacking, you know, as large of an airport as we are, we only have one club today, and that's the Admiral uh, Club of American Airlines, which only those customers who are part of the American Airlines Club can use that one. So 53% uh, of our customers fly out of Terminal 2, and there's no club amenity. And based on the feedback and the comments that we're getting, uh, that is something that the business traveler uh, wants. They want the access to that, to be able to come in a quiet space and work. And so, uh, you know, again, if you look at airports around the country, most airports our size would have three or four clubs. So this will be our opportunity to have our second club. When's this club supposed to uh, open? It's given nine months, sir. They're, they're going to get it in the space in July, um, so probably spring next year, maybe even a little bit before that, late, late winter. We're pushing them to try to open for the holidays. It's pretty aggressive, but that's what we're pushing for. And to be a member of the club, it's fifty dollars. <coughs> what, what is it? No, there's what is? You, you, there's day passes. Those day passes, depending on what the vendor decides to set, usually run forty to fifty dollars for a day pass. If you want to be a member, you can buy a annual membership. And again, those varies depending on the different organizations that run the clubs, usually somewhere in the four to $500 range a year. So we don't know their exact price. I think they're still out looking at all that in the competition to make sure that they're competitive. But uh, there's a, they'll have an opportunity for a day pass. They'll have an opportunity for an annual uh, membership. And then they'll have a reciprocal membership with other clubs that operate as they do uh, in parts of the country. Thank you. Okay, I just have a, a, a couple of comments. We're way overdue for this. Uh, unfortunately, when we go to most other airports, we have so many additional services that are provided at the airport. And I'm so excited with the areas that have the tablets that you can sit at. I'm excited about, oh yeah, I'm really excited about those in the airports. I mean, and that's another reason why you want to have as many services as possible. Because a lot of people do actually plan their trips to bypass certain airports because it's not accommodating. Most especially the, busy, the business traveler. And the best we have at Southwest is you get a business select when you go in for security and that's about it. So we do need something there. And, it, uh, and that terminal definitely brings in the most money for us right now. So uh, I appreciate the fact that we're looking at this. Uh, I'm really serious about uh, having opportunities to learn. So if we can prepare something for our next committee meeting where we have the opportunity to understand the differences of the certifications, uh, diversity certifications, because most people are somewhat aware of MBWBE, but not totally understanding that either. So um, this is entirely different. We need to understand it. So as we move forward uh, and you bring things to us, it won't be as difficult for us to uh, uh, move forward with these bills. Also, I wanted to say very quickly that um, when I was looking at uh, the penalties on here, uh, when they misbehave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they looked a little low to me. Is this standard? I'm sure it's our standard. It's, it, it's, just, it's, it's just a standard, standard that, we, that we work with. And a lot of times, you know, as you go through the bid process, 
Um, people will ask questions about liquidated damages and things like that. Uh -huh. And we, we get questions actually, you know, can, we don't think this is fair. Can you lower this? And most times we say no. Excuse me. Can we have a little order, please? Thank you. Um, so this is, this is That's your standard, yeah. Okay, okay. And we do have our legal department that reviews, obviously, every RFP that goes out goes through our legal department Absolutely. as well. Okay, okay. I appreciate that. <coughs> and then the, uh, the other thing that I, when we do this session, could we also identify the difference between uh, airport services, concessions, and terminal fees? I think that's critical as well. All right. Uh, any more questions for anybody? Hearing none, the chair will accept the motion of board. That we pass board bill 28 with a due pass recommendation. Second. Previous roll. I'd like to check the previous one. Oh. All right, you call the roll, please. Yes. Alderman Conway. Alderman Flowers. Aye. Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Vaccaro. No. Alderman Cone. Aye. Alderman Howard. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Aye. Yes. Chairwoman Davis. Aye. Five, I vote, one, no vote, one pass. Well, thank you. Board bill number 28 is passed. Um, now we'll move on to board bill number 29. Morning, committee members again. Good morning. Uh, again, this is one of these uh, lease agreements that fits in within our five-year strategic plan goals to generate revenue from underutilized land. So this is a lease agreement with Ameren, Missouri, and uh, the airport with uh, to lease five acres of undeveloped land on airport property in, near the intersection of Fifi and Missouri Bottom Road. And I also have diagrams again for you. And on this map, uh, Rob is uh, <laughs> uh, Sure. He knows a little bit better than me where this we're, is actually at. And it's in, if you look here, it is in a piece of property that's surrounded, it's on a hillside, it's surrounded by road, and so there's just it's a little pocket that's stuck in here that can't be used really for anything else. So it's, it's a very small piece of pocket right in there. Yeah, it sits on the side of a hill, very expensive and unattractive to develop. So when, we, when Ameren, Missouri approached us with this uh, ideal, this was a really good opportunity for us and for Ameren as well. Uh, this is the installation of solar facilities uh, within this property. Uh, rent will be about 3000 annually with a consumer price index uh, rent escalation e every five years. Um, and at this time, we would like to recommend this for the committee uh, for approval. One, one additional thing, we have a very aggressive sustainability program at the airport, uh, and we have been successful uh, as a result of our sustainability program. We've been very successful in getting a lot of grants, grants that we can use for our vehicles that are either CNG or the electric vehicles. Uh, we've been able to get rebates uh, from Ameren. Last year we had a $450,000 check from Ameren that was a rebate as a result of putting in LED lights. So we've been very aggressive on that. We've also been recognized as an airport uh, with one of the more high profile sustainability. So this is another means of one bringing another form of, of uh, sustainability into the airport, showing the airport as progressive. We also spend about $2,500 a year mowing this little piece of property. Oh, gosh. We will no longer have to do that. Ameren will pay for all of the installation uh, of the panels, obviously, and the mowing of it. So uh, we do think that it's a, uh, something that will elevate our profile once again and help us to be more successful in additional grants that uh, we're able to obtain and get for, whether it be for vehicles or whether it be for uh, additional items at the airport that we're looking at. Okay. Uh, we'll start with questions. Alderwoman Flowers. Yes, thank you. What does Amor want to do with it again? They're creating a solar farm. So they, under federal law, Ameren has to have sustainable energy as well, uh, outside of just coal. And so one of the things that they are tasked with is creating the opportunity to use solar panels. So it has to be a net zero sum game to them. 
So they look at property around the region where they can put solar panels on. Customers who are currently using their electricity can opt in to be a solar panel customer versus the electricity that they're generating. And so they have to have so many of these available in order to meet federal regulations today. That's about the extent, without getting technical, that I can explain it. Um, I mean, it looks like a bunch of trees. I mean, what were you cutting? I don't, it just looks like grass. trees. So this, this piece of property right here is it's surrounded by some trees, but all of this is right in here middle. is just grass. Okay. And if you're paying $2,500 a year in maintenance, why just charge them $500 more? Why not more than that? They're paying, they will be mowing all of it, mm -hmm. and they'll be paying us the annualized rent of $3,000. Okay. So you, we get the benefit of both of those. Okay, so it's almost a $5,500. On a piece of property that has zero value. Uh, there was other property that they looked at that they wanted and we said no to because we felt that that property had value and that we would be able to do other things with it. But this particular section we, we identified for them and said, you know, here's something that we can't do anything with. Uh, and it actually worked for them as well. So with those solar panels, people will be able to get electrical service you're saying from? Solar service. Solar service. So current customers that they have using their electricity can opt in to be able to use solar. So typically a solar farm like this uh, will, will could, how, could supply solar electricity uh, for up to about 125 homes. Now there could be businesses that opt in. I mean, that's the other thing they have to do. They have to go out and market this and have their customers that want to switch from using current electricity to this. So that's all on them. That's not on us to do. And so how did you come to this particular lease amount? The, what we looked at for them, um, one, as I said, our sustainability program is, is very important to us and it has uh, been able to get us a lot of grants, uh, veil grants that we had not been able to take advantage of in the past. So what they looked at was what they were able with the cost of install, uh, installations, with the cost of what this program is for them, that was the, what they could offer basically. So we looked at it and we said, we asked them to come up a little bit, which they did. We started, they started out at about 1500. We said, no, we're not willing to do that. We got it up to 3000. Again, they take care of all the mowing and all the installation. So it was something that worked on both ends. I mean, if, if this were a piece of property that had access or that was prime or that had contiguity with other acreage, we wouldn't have looked at a program. But this little pocket is sitting there and never can be developed into anything. So we looked at it as not only the revenue generation, but also the offset of the grass mowing and then the benefit of us to be able to write it into our sustainability program to be able to get more grants to help us purchase equipment or help us purchase sustainable items at the airport. Did they mention to you that solar panel energy was higher or lower than electric? They, currently today, will those, will those 125 panels, customers pay more or less? They would, well, they, so Ameren has to be what they call a net zero mm -hmm. sub game. It cost Ameren more to do it. That's why they have to be able to keep that cost low and competitive because they won't get customers to opt into it. So the customers will pay a premium to yeah. opt into solar, um, but they have to try to make sure that that cost, again, under their federal regulations, have to make sure that that cost is competitive so that people want to move toward solar versus staying with electricity, pure traditional electricity. Okay, all right, no more questions, thank you. Okay, uh, Alderman Moore. How large is that piece of land? Five acres. Five acres. Five acres. And what, what surrounding areas would it service? What's the radius of service that it will provide for solar for customers in that area? I, I, you know what, I'm not sure. The, you're asking how far out someone could opt into the solar. I, you know, I don't, I don't know the yeah, answer I don't, to that. I'm sure they. I could get, the, I could ask Ameren for that, but I, I don't know the answer. Would it be in miles or, or would it be in, in footage? Oh, it would be miles, not footage. That's all I have. Okay. <laughs> Alderman Vaccaro. Mine's easy this time. <laughs> so when they do solar panels, obviously they're like mirrors, and that close to the runway, will that 
make it harder for the pilots if that stuff's, the sun's bouncing off that toward the planes? I'm just curious. No, I'm that, not trying to question. be. The, uh, the FAA obviously has to improve this program as well. There are anti-glare panels, uh, and that's what must be used at airports, so they are anti-glare panels. And uh, there are uh, a, a few other airports. Denver, Indianapolis have some fairly significant 40, 50 acre solar farms uh, using these non glare panels. So the FAA obviously has been part of this whole process as well. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Okay, Alderman Cohn. No questions. Alderman Howard. No questions. Alderman Muhammad. None. Okay, this is exciting. It's exciting. Yeah, I like that. Um, I don't have any questions either. Um, I, I move to, that we you know, pass for Bill 29. It's been second. Moved and second for approval of board bill number 29. Previous roll. I object to previous roll. And call the roll, please. Alderman Conway. Alderman Flowers. Aye. Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Bocaro. <coughs> Alderman Cohn. Aye. Alderman Howard. <coughs> Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Aye. Chairwoman Davis. Aye. Seven aye votes. Board Bill number 29 has been approved. A couple of housekeeping items before we adjourn. The first Tuesday of the month is also, or is it the second Tuesday of the month? Second Tuesday of the month is also the meeting date for uh, the Port Authority. Okay. So I would be losing one member of my committee. So you prefer to change that? I mean, we're, we're open. It, Mondays are really hard for the airport. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, we had the, the first Wednesday of every month is airport commission. Uh -huh. So we try to keep, always keep that Wednesday open. So if you try, you know, but Tuesdays or Thursdays could work if there's a different day that is better for you. Uh, Thursday. Do you know what committees you're on on Thursdays? Thursdays can be legislative meetings. We have to do them on Thursday morning. Okay. Anybody else? Well, for now, ways and means, but that'll be. It'll be, be over in a couple of weeks. Yeah. I would like to know what that regular uh, set schedule for meetings are, because I don't have one for health and human services. Have we don't have a set. Okay. No, they just been kind of doing whatever. People have kind of been. Like we know that HUS is always going to be on Wednesday mornings. Um, but I don't know if everybody else has scheduled. Have you scheduled a set date for your committee? Uh, May 30th is the first one, which is a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. it, um, we'll probably have some other meetings that pop up that aren't on a Tuesday, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. We're also open to afternoon. I don't know if that works for, for anyone here. Afternoons are really bad for me. Yeah, we lose a lot of people in the afternoons. Yeah. The Monday afternoons, that's it. Right. So why don't we do this? Why don't we explore? I'll send a memo out, and I'll ask the chairmen of the other committees, do they have a set date? And we'll try to work that out, be uh, because I would like for the full committee to have an opportunity the to be here. The other thing, it, like neighborhood development has generally only met <coughs> once a month as oh. well. So even okay. if it's a Tuesday morning, it's usually like one Tuesday morning out of the month that does like all of the, Okay. at least okay. that's what Jeffrey and Ken did. So. Okay, all right, and and again, uh, we got a couple of other committees that meet more regular, and so I want to do that survey, and get back to you. Um, the other thing that I wanted to uh, ask you very quickly about is um, the airport uh, privatization. Uh, a lot of people are buzzing about it, and I think it's too early for us to be buzzing about it because it's in its infant stage and until you know more about what this is going to be, what it looks like, there's really no reason for us to talk about it. And so um, once you feel that there's something specific that you can really concrete, let me know, we'll add it to the agenda. Uh, and, but in the meantime, I would prefer that that is not a topic for us to speak to the public on because we don't know anything. And we don't either, quite honestly. I, I know don't. you don't. <laughs> That's why I'm saying it. Everybody running around making, you know, comments when they don't even know what the comments are about. So um, I am uh, waiting to hear from you. 
uh, and then we'll put it on the agenda for us to have discussion. We'll put it on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and how long yeah. would you like to allocate for Amber to speak at our next meeting relative to all of the, uh, both M&W and ACDB and how the differences and where we're at percentages and all of that? How mm -hmm. long would you like to allot for that? Do you, do you think 15 is enough? I think so. I think so. I think she has a pretty good presentation. presentation. She's got I, it down yeah. pat. She yeah. Quite yeah. Often, and it would be so. good for everybody to meet her, too. Yeah, that would be yeah. great. If people yeah. That would be great. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all for your support today. We appreciate all right. it. Mm -hmm. Me meeting adjourned if we have no other questions. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Yes, sir.